Now let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis. Carlene, you have been tracking Ian. I know you used to live in that part of the country. Yes. What's the situation right now? The situation right now is Ian is still a major hurricane. You're talking about a Category 3, and it is just towards the west of Key West. So a lot of the impacts are already being felt across the state. You can see a lot of those feeder bands extending all the way towards portions of Broward County, moving into Palm Beach as well. So this is a massive storm system. You're talking about a major hurricane right now as a category three and it's about 180 miles to the south southwest of Punta Gorda, Florida. Now it is moving towards the north northeast but at a slow pace. So we're talking about 10 miles per hour with his current track with maximum sustained wind speeds up to about 120 miles per hour. It is anticipated now yesterday the forecast cone at least the one around 11 p.m. was suggesting that this storm system would actually not be a major hurricane when making impact. It does look to make impact and make landfall just a little bit towards the north of Fort Myers as a category four hurricane with the latest forecast cone. When you're talking about Ian, you're noticing going from a category four potential impact going into Wednesday morning into a category one. That's because once it interacts with the actual uh, land, that's when it's going to rapidly weaken. But we're still talking about major impacts for that area just north of Fort Myers, also south of Sarasota. And that's with storm surge up to about 12 feet, 10 to 12 feet, and then heavy rainfall. Some areas could see an upwards of about 20 inches of rain, but in the one area we're highlighting from Sarasota towards Fort Myers, potentially up to about 10 to 15 inches of rain. Another key thing when you're talking about hurricanes, people have a tendency to just focus on the forecast cone. You really shouldn't do that because as Marcella had mentioned, I did live in Florida when we had a similar path and that was with Irma. Irma was a major hurricane that impacted Southwest Florida, but the impacts were felt across Miami-Dade County. Also talking about that all across the entire state because you have these strong feeder bands and that can give way to strong destructive winds. Also a lot of flooding. And so the size of Ian is double the size of the state you are talking about a major storm system with this one. So we'll be keeping a close eye over the next days, next few days, and once it does actually start to dissipate, it looks to be the second half of the week as it does make its way towards the northeast. Taking a look at our eight day microclimate forecast, we got nothing like that. We have the sunshine out there, but we are looking at a slight chance for some afternoon thunderstorms over the mountains by tomorrow. I'll let you know why next half hour. Let's go ahead and take a look at your weather quiz question for tonight. Which cold north flowing current is located west of South America? Is it A, the Canary, B, Labrador, C, Peru, or D, Brazil? Huh. North flowing. I, think, I add a huh, not a hmm. You know, you can switch it up sometimes. West <laughs> of South America. Uh, uh -huh. Like a map. Uh -huh. It's an easy one. I said South America. All right, just head to our website, cbs8.com slash weather quiz to make your guess. You could win a grand prize six show package featuring a pair of opening night tickets to see these shows right here on your screen, including Beetlejuice and Annie. You can see them at San Diego's uh, San Diego Civic Theater during Broadway San Diego's 45th season. This prize is sponsored by Corky's Pest Control. You get your new weather quiz question every Monday through Friday during this newscast and our 7 a.m. Good luck.